deep below the surface, the Warden. Hero of the Skulks guards the deep dark prison. However, a group of mages have slain the Warden and stole his magical keys. Luckily, they were chased off before they could open a giant gate, imprisoning a powerful creature. Now, a new Skulk must be chosen to take up the mantle of Warden to stop the Mage Guild from opening the gate and releasing chaos upon the world. Can we stop them? Make sure to like, subscribe, and watch to the end to find out. Now, here's 100 days as a Warden in Hardcore Minecraft. On day one, some fellow Skulks and I were tasked with fighting off the last of the Mage's minions. They left behind these little goblins who really packed a punch. Luckily, our blacksmith, the Dark Forger, showed up and smushed the last of the goblins. Then he told us we were summoned by the Skulk King. The King and his council told us to prepare for the Warden Trials, only giving us a little bit of wood. My health was still low from the goblins, so I traveled around the deep dark in search for some delicious mushrooms. I made mushroom soup and went off to the prison the old warden tried to protect. Whatever is trapped behind that gate must be very big and very dangerous. The next morning, I was awoken by the king's advisor. Time to rise and shine. Uh, hello? The king has scheduled the warden trials to begin tomorrow. What should I bring? I wasn't around the last time they were held. I suggest bringing everything you would need in a battle. A battle? All right. Will there be a lot of other contestants? <laughs> At first, but don't worry. I'm sure you'll do fine. I never thought I'd have the chance to become the next warden. It truly is a great honor. But first, you should work on getting some gear. I spent the rest of day two collecting all the iron and coal I could find. The old warden was such a legendary guardian of the deep dark prison. Even though he was advanced in age and fully blind, he was a powerful warrior that will be hard to replace. While my iron was smelting, I heard noises coming from the prison. It sounded like monsters escaped, and when I turned the corner, it turned out to be this video sponsor, Monster Legends, a free-to-play mobile game where you can collect over a thousand monsters and forge your own empire. Easily download it using the link in the description or the QR code on the screen. Then, see what new species you can create by breeding different monsters together, feeding them to grow stronger. Form your best teams to take on other monster masters in battles where you can win rewards and reach the top leagues. And now that Monster Legends has teamed up with The Walking Dead, you'll be able to collect six new monsters inspired by some of the heroes in the show. You can get Rick, Michonne, Negan, Daryl, Carol, and Maggie. These unique new monsters have some amazing abilities and can bring your team to a whole new level. Check out the Rick monster that is already available in the game and collect the others as they become available to automatically unlock the Negan monster. Then, master the dungeon to get the indestructible Michonne monster. Use the link in my description or the QR code to get a special starter pack worth 100,000 gold, 20,000 food, and 3 gems, along with the fearsome Mothman all for free. I left the prison relieved, now with an awesome game to play. By the end of the day, I was all geared up and ready to compete in the Warden Trials. Day 3, the King welcomed us to the Trials and said the winner would receive the Mantle of Warden. Along with the power and respect of the Underrealm, we were quickly thrust into the first trial, Parkour. The next Warden must be agile to outmaneuver any threat, as well as not fall from high places. This challenge eliminated all the clumsy skulks. Day 4, I went with all the other skulks that passed the first trial to a big room with ruins all over the place. The king said the second trial was combat as he pulled a lever. A secret hatch opened, releasing a horde of those goblins. The next warden must be a brave fighter if they hope to survive their responsibilities. After the last of the goblins were slain, it was clear who would move on to the final trial. Before we could begin the last trial, the portal to the surface had to be fixed. The mages broke it during their escape by using a normal flint and steel. I worked alongside the other contestants to gather enough deep slate and skulk bone blocks for the dark forger to craft the special blocks needed to restore the portal. Since we will now return to the surface for the first time in centuries, I figured we could also use a proper staircase up to the portal too. The dark forger lit the portal with a deep slate flint and steel, producing a stable portal. We went through, teleporting into a recently excavated cave. The mages definitely put a lot of effort into infiltrating our home. As I left the cave, I was greeted by a blinding light that luckily began to dim. The sun I've heard so much about was now setting and the comforting night was upon us. I found a surface skeleton and zombie. They looked much different than the ones in the deep dark. The dark forger only let us explore a little bit before beckoning us all back to the portal. Day 6 marked the final day of the warden trials. We all returned to the surface and experienced the full brightness of the sun for the first time. That alone caused a couple skulks to give up. The last trial was a test of wits. Find out where our attackers went. The next warden had to be as clever as he was strong and agile. So we were brought to a place where these spellcasters controlled the winds. The advisor thought they may know something about the mages, but they attacked us on sight, throwing us up in the air. The rest of the skulks retreated, but I was determined to win. I ran around trying my best to avoid their attacks while striking them down with my sword. Once it was safe, I looked for clues, finding a letter from a sky witch. She tried to recruit these wind callers to help storm the deep dark, and her base was close to a nearby village, but wouldn't stay there forever? A bit confused, I returned to the king and his council with the letter. They declared me the champion of the trials and the next warden. As they began to chant in an ancient tongue, I began to float off the ground. Then I felt a surge of power as I officially became the warden. You are now ready for a very important quest. Guarding the prison? In a sense, the group of magical sun dwellers who defeated the last warden stole his magical keys. Each of the three were seen running off with one. So I need to get the keys back? 
back. Precisely. You must defeat these thieves before they return to open their king gate deep in the prison. I will. But first, now that the portal is reopened, we need you to build some defenses around the portal on the surface. Day 7, I spent collecting deep slate and more iron for bars and doors. I also ran into a group of stray goblins. They were definitely servants of the mages. After defeating them, I looted the mushrooms they're collecting and replenished my food supply. I took the next two days to clear out the cave around the portal and make some room for my things, along with making some interior design changes. Then, on day 10, I turned the cave entrance into a fortified staircase that led down into the portal room. The following day, I finished my building for now with some strong deep slate walls and added iron to protect the entrance. Then, I headed back down into the deep dark and visited the prison I was now in charge of. A lot of cells were empty, but a few had some strange creatures inside. The prison seemed to really mess with the minds of those imprisoned. And of course, there was also the giant arcane gate I was supposed to watch over. I wonder what's behind there, and why would the mages want it opened? I spent days 12 through 14 searching the land surrounding the portal for a village, in hopes of finding the Sky Witch. But I didn't have much luck. Instead, I found a mysterious creeper altar, along with a chest filled with emeralds. That excitement turned to dread as several creepers broke through the tree line and began blowing up. I tried my best to fend them off, but caused a chain reaction of explosions. I barely managed to escape and left all that destruction behind. Normally, creepers are not hostile towards skulks, but I did steal from those ones. Day 15, I returned to find some of the skulks by the portal. They said the goblins attacked while I was away, and we need to upgrade the defenses. Then I found the king awaiting me at the prison gate. He said an ancient evil is trapped here. It needlessly attacked our home, and many skulks perished imprisoning it. It's up to me to stop the mage guild from releasing the creature, but he got some scouts to aid in the search. I spent the rest of that day collecting more deep slate and skulk bone blocks to bring to the dark forger to make reinforced deep slate for my build. I spent the next three days expanding the outpost around the dark portal. I added four towers with thicker walls, and now it just needed guards. When I asked the council for troops to stand guard, the spell scribe gave me a spell to enthrall some skulk skeletons. I gathered four of them under my command and led them to the surface. They're not the smartest creatures, but they make good sentries with their new bows from the dark forger. I also took a bow and arrows too, just in case. The next morning, a scout arrived and he found a nearby village. On the way there, he told me humans no longer occupied villages like they used to when skulks were on the surface. Of course, that was several centuries ago, before the great burrowing. He led me to the outskirts of the village and headed home. I cautiously approached with emeralds in hand, just as the scout recommended. They were surprisingly welcoming and all wanted to trade with me. I got some gross surface food and some supplies. Then the mayor showed up. He was not as welcoming, but I gave him a few emeralds and asked about the sun-dwelling spellcasters. He said the Sky Witch was part of the Mage Guild, along with the Sorcerer, which was led by the Enchanter, and that they rule over these lands with an iron fist. He led me to the edge of the village and said the Sky Witch's tower should be that way, but it could have moved? I returned home the night of day 20 to tell the advisor of my findings. The next morning, the Underbrewer gave me a few health potions in exchange for some surface supplies and sent me on my way. I spent all day traveling past the village and onto the Sky Witch's tower. Upon arrival on day 22, I spied on the tower from afar and saw more of those wind colors patrolling the clouds. I snuck my way over to a waterfall and swam my way up. When I got to the top, a powerful gust of wind swept me off my feet. I scrambled to shoot the wind colors with my bow, and when I landed, I ran in with my sword. After defeating the first few, the Sky Witch appeared. When I got close, she zapped me with lightning and ran off. Then, more wind colors came to attack me. Once they were dealt with, I found the Sky Witch, and she zapped me again before attacking me with my sword. Just as I was thinking about making a run for it, she fell in battle, dropping her wand and the first key. I explored her tower, searching for clues about the rest of the mage guild. All I could find was a letter that the sorcerer has set up a new base and seems obsessed with creepers. That wasn't too much to go off of, so I figured I'd try to find some more locals to question on the way home. On the night of day 23, I ran into a group of unfriendly sun dwellers who attacked me on sight, firing arrows at me and chasing me down. Then, another heavily armored one joined the fray, but to my surprise, he began fighting off the band of enemies, so I jumped into battle to help. After our victory, the stranger introduced himself as a vindicator and warden for the Archivoker's prison, and when I told him my mission, he said the guys who attacked me were illagers from a warring faction. Their leader, the Enchanter, sent them to find new recruits. Next, he showed me the direction of a nearby outpost he'll be at while dealing with the sorcerer and his goblins. But before going there, I needed to talk to the council. The following day, I returned home with the first key in hand. Welcome back, warden. Did the trip prove successful? Yes, the first key is safe. The Sky Witch and her forces are no more. Excellent. That just leaves the sorcerer and the Enchanter. I did discover the sorcerer leads the goblins, and the Enchanter has been building up an army of his own. We have discovered something too. The Mage Guild used to be on a heroic group of villagers. When was this? Centuries ago, before the Great Bureau, before our people moved down here and cut ourselves off from the surface. So what changed these latest mages into illagers? We don't know. The creature imprisoned behind our king gate wields enough dark magic to do so, but it shouldn't have a way to reach the outside world. I'm gonna need better gear for the journey ahead. I left the council behind and had an odd feeling they weren't telling me the whole story. I spent the next several days mining for diamonds. I found enough diamonds in the deep dark to make a sword and pickaxe. Then I tried mining closer to the surface, finding much more luck there. And by day 29, 
29, I hit a full set of diamond armor. On day 30, I set up a small outpost in the prison, leaving some more enthralled skeletons to stand guard. For the rest of day 30, throughout day 31, I gathered some mushrooms from the deep dark. It's so much better than the surface food. And while out collecting, I found two chefs, one villager and one illager gathering mushrooms too. I don't know which is more confusing, how they got down here or why they were working together. Either way, they managed to escape my grasp. Now, all ready for battle, I traveled toward the nearby outpost the Vindicator pointed me toward. The night of day 32, I found the tower, but the illagers guarding it were not welcoming. <laughs> Luckily, a small little ghost ordered them to stand down and flew up to me. I've been expecting you. You have? What exactly are you? Yes, I'm a Vex. I serve the Arch of Oka, doing the research and collecting materials while his illagers and ravagers fight his battles. Right, so is the Vindicator here? A warden had to return home to tend to his prisoners. He'll be back soon. How can I help? I need help finding the last two members of the Mage Guild. Ah, yes, your victory over the Sky Witch is quite impressive. The Enchanter's castle is heavily guarded, so we've been tracking the sorcerer first. We should find his base soon. That's great. Thanks for your help. In the meantime, we could use your help collecting materials from the nether. It's for something to use against the enchanter, and I had a custom portal built just for you. He led me behind the outpost where a large nether portal stood and told me what they needed. The next few days were hectic to say the least. Variant piglins have begun showing up in the nether, and it's been pure chaos. Warped piglins fighting normal piglins is one thing, but having an ender dragon chase you through this fiery terrain is not something I would have ever imagined. Luckily, a warped piglin saved me from the chaos and led me to his castle. Here we are, the warped castle. Thanks for saving me. Now, what is going on in the nether? The warped piglins and I came from a different universe to conquer these lands. And it seems like the ender piglins had the same idea. Ender piglins? Is that why there was an ender dragon? That was an ender piglin. The ender queen's two top guys can shapeshift into ender dragons. Wouldn't that be a bad thing? Well, yes, but it's still cool. We had control of the nether until they showed up. Now all three piglin factions are at war. Look, the fate of all three dimensions are at stake. I don't have time to explain. I need to get some materials from the nether and get back to the overworld before a great evil is released. Well, why didn't you say so? Follow me. We went inside and I met the warped piglin king, who was happy to share his resources to save his piglins from the evil behind my gate. They gave me a barrel of everything I needed and I headed back to the nether portal. On my way back, I ran into a few ender piglins, but they didn't give me any trouble since I was leaving. Day 36, I made it back to the outpost. This time, the vex wasn't there, but the vindicator was and he had some friends with him. Oh, you're a big fella, aren't you? Hello there. I'm the general of the Ark of Oker's army. My Vindicator friend right here is one of our best. He knows these lands very well. Don't worry, my men will keep the Enchanter's forces busy while you two stop the Sorcerer. And with that, they were off. The Vindicator said once they locate the base in the Creeper Woods, he'd send for me. So off I went. On the way back, I stopped at a spruce forest to collect some wood. Then I spent the next two days building a final wall around the portal fortress. I figured this would help it blend in a little more. And on the night of day 40, I found some council members in the prison with an imprisoned prison skulk that looked off. This skulk woke up one morning and went crazy, trying to attack the king. He claims the creature behind our king gate forced him to do it. How could it force anyone to do something locked up? It seems to be communicating with the outside world through people's dreams. That would explain how it contacted the mage guild, but why would they release such a creature? It offers great power to those who want it, slowly corrupting the minds of those who wield it. They'll stop at nothing to open the gate. The council members reflected any more questions I had, suggesting I just search through the ruins of the old warden's home, which the mage is destroyed. I did find remains of his journal, and it said, The Dark One offers power, but hungers for magic. So maybe it's just exploiting the mage guild to escape? Something still felt off. The next day, the Vex arrived to my fortress, and I gave him the supplies from the war piglins. Then he led me toward the sorcerer's lair. On day 42, we reached a guarded location deep in the creeper woods, where a giant creeper statue stood. This is the place. I've been spying on their operations. He always enters his base, but I've never seen him leave. Is there another exit? Not that we found. It's like he vanishes, and then shows up walking through the forest again. I'm going in for a closer look. Wait! I ran out and began attacking the goblin guards, but they released some charge creepers to keep me at bay. They blew up and got my health really low, so I fell back and tried to shoot the last of the goblins. Once things calmed down, I made my way inside where the sorcerer was waiting for me with TNT. He set it off and jumped through the nether portal while I ran for my life. When we finally got the portal reactivated, the sorcerer and his goblins were long gone. Luckily, the Vex found instructions on a fallen goblin to retreat back to the deep dark lair if attacked. We also noticed noticed a big cauldron next to the creeper statue, but wasn't really sure what it was for. The next day, after looting the food and arrows that remained here, I headed back home. And on the way back, I saw a large bee traveling with an enormous tree creature. I made sure to avoid them. While the Vex led an expedition into the nether to search for the sorcerer, I asked around my ancient city, and one miner said he heard some weird clanging noises coming from one of the caves. I cautiously went in with sword in hand, surprised to see some golems and one little copper golem approaching me. What are you doing all the way down here? Relax, we're not hostile. I'm not allowed to pick any more fights. What exactly are you? 
I'm a skulk. Now, why are you trespassing? Cool. My big brother said that we might run into some skulks this deep down. We're collecting deep slate redstone for an experiment. Why not use normal redstone? Normal redstone makes golems very hostile. We just want peace to pursue science. I just want peace too. Have any of you seen a spellcaster or goblins down here? Or maybe a nether portal? Yes, those goblins stole everything we mined. Where did they go? We don't know, man, but we gotta get home. The copper golem quickly threw me an enchanted pickaxe and said they know someone who could help if I bring them the redstone they needed. So off I went collecting redstone with this silk touch pickaxe until it broke. Day 46, I went up to the surface and began traveling to the location the golems told me to meet them. On the way, I ran into more of the enchanter's forces. There was way too many of them, so I blasted one of them with lightning before running off. The next day, I arrived at the golems encampment. All types of golems were working together to build a home for themselves, and that bee and tree thing were here too. It's been centuries since I've seen any skulk on the surface, especially a warden. What's going on here? Who are you? The golems are no longer servants of others. They are now free to pursue whatever they want, and that is science. So I, the queen bee, am here to help. And what's that thing? He is the guardian of the jungle. As part of nature, we know what it's like to be mistreated by others, so we are here to help give the golems a fresh start. We were suddenly interrupted by those illagers I ran into the day before. I must have led them here by accident. The golems and I were outnumbered. That's until the jungle guardian summoned several plant creatures to join the fight and overpower the enchanter's forces. After the fight, I gave the copper golem the redstone he needed, and in return, the queen bee gave me a device that can locate nether portals. I spent the next two days traveling back to the outpost to get the vex and vindicator and bring them to the deep dark. They didn't have too much luck finding the sorcerer, and they were really intrigued about my new portal finding device. Since illagers don't have a good history with golems, I decided to keep where I got it a secret. We explored the endless cave systems for what seemed like an eternity, until finally the queen bee's device began to activate, leading us right to the lair entrance, guarded by strange looking goblins. I fiercely led the charge against these tiny vermin, who set off smoke bombs, making it hard to see all the goblins attacking us. They definitely have strength in numbers, but we did manage to prevail. Then we snuck our way into the lair, where he had traps installed to stop any trespassers. I almost fell right into a lava pit, but luckily the Vex was able to fly over and close it. When we got to the main room, the sorcerer saw us and ran back into the nether portal. This time we were able to catch him in the nether, where he challenged me to a duel. He placed the key down, as normal piglins gathered around to watch us battle it out. I quickly pulled out my bow and let an arrow fly. He responded with a row of fangs that teleported us to each other's spots. A bit disorienting, but I kept attacking. He summoned two illusions of himself that also attacked me. They all looked the same, but the fake ones poofed into smoke when attacked. I tried switching to my sword, but when I got close, he summoned fangs all around him. I had to jump back, peppering him and his illusions with arrows while trying my best to dodge and heal up. It was a tough battle, and very relieving when he finally crumpled over defeated. <laughs> Luckily, the piglins dispersed as I scooped up the second key. Only one more to go. After the fight, we searched his lair for anything of use. I took all of his food, potions, arrows, and emeralds. I also found his journal where he mentioned a backup plan to bring a giant creeper statue to life and blow up the deep dark gate. To release... <sighs> the creature's name was smudged. Then this last chest scared me so bad when a goblin popped out and began attacking me. I was so ready to leave this place. My companions left and I returned to the council at the end of day 52. I told them about the defeat of the sorcerer and the retrieval of the second key. The king said I proved myself once again as the advisor gave me a magical weapon known as a soul fist, and the keys seemed to give the soul fist power. I also told them of the enchanter's backup plan and how the giant creeper could be alive by now. With the rest of the mage guild now defeated, the enchanter went on the offensive, sending a lot of troops our way. Over the next two days, I fought to protect the dark portal with the help of my enthralled undead guards. Then I worked to push his troops back to where they came from. Day 55, I was worn out from all this fighting and was in desperate need of an armor upgrade. The dark forger sent me off to collect skulk blocks for most of this day. And that night, with a little help from the underbrewer, he mixed the skulk blocks with some other materials and a pinch of dark magic, creating a full set of enchanted skulk armor. The following day, I upgraded the dark portal defenses some and added more enthralled skeletons along with some skulk zombies to stay on guard. Day 57, that Ildr chef from before came to my fortress sent by the archivoker to thank me for the nether supplies. I listened to his exciting stories as he made me the most delicious steak I ever had. With the fortress defenses, along with my own armor now strengthened, I traveled back to the creeper woods to see if that giant creeper statue was brought to life. When I got there, it was a huge relief to see the lifeless statue. However, the cauldron beside it was now missing. Maybe the enchanter is planning to bring something else alive? I set up camp on the outskirts of the forest since I can't seem to trust creepers anymore. And that night, I caught a glimpse of a blue figure lurking in the shadows. Thinking it was a fellow skulk, I slowly approached it. But it was not a skulk, and he ran off before I could talk to him. I spent the next two days getting a little lost looking for that mysterious villager and stumbling upon a familiar face. I'm surprised to see you out here. Wait, did that device work? Yes, thank you. With your help, I found and defeated the sorcerer. That's great. With those goblins free from his spell, they'll head home and not bother us anymore. That's good. Did you see a blue 
blue robed villager pass by here recently? You mean the wandering hero? Yeah. He said he was tracking a monster of some sort reported near the creeper woods. Hmm. I wonder if he meant me. You do not want to be on the wrong side of the wandering hero's guild. Hopefully, it's all a big misunderstanding. I guess we'll see. With a little help from the copper golem, I found my way back home on the night of day 60. The next morning, I checked on the dark portal and noticed some of the sentries acting a little weird. One skulk skeleton randomly left the compound, expecting me to follow. I hesitantly pursued as he led me to a cave entrance with a chest inside. I opened the chest to find the enchanter's secret diary, but it was a trap. The skeleton fell over and I was attacked by several glowing creatures. They were all enchanted and really overpowered, so I fought my way through and escaped. They eventually showed up at the fortress, where my unaffected sentries helped fight them off. I reported this trickery to the spell scribe, so he could make a spell to prevent the enchanter from enchanting our troops again. Now, it was time to bring the fight to the enchanter. I spent day 63 collecting some more mushrooms and got some potions from the underbrewer before heading out into the night. I regrouped with the Vindicator and the Vex, and they helped me push toward the enchanter's castle, fighting every patrol party we came across. The Vindicator really led the way. He seemed to know these lands well, and the closer we got to the enchanter's castle, the more defiant illagers we ran into. When we set up camp for the night of day 65, I asked about the wandering heroes. They said those blue-robed vermin were a thorn in their side, and recounted how their illusioner burned down their tavern, causing the wandering heroes to disperse. Early the next morning, we snuck up to the enchanter's castle, but a magical barrier blocked our path. My companions set up a strange device they made with the nether supplies I got for them, and then tried to blow their way through the wall. Instead of it working, it just alerted the whole place we were there, so we ran for our lives. We'll have to figure out another way through later. By that night, we managed to elude the enchanter's forces, and were really happy to run into some friendly pillagers. They led us back to their pillager outpost, where they were guarding a creature similar to the Vex. Hello there. I've never seen something like you before. I'm in LA, and I already told those pillagers I'm not helping them. What were you doing out here? <sighs> I finally escaped the enchanter, just to get caught by these illagers. If I free you, do you promise not to run? Yes, I do. I looked at the illagers, and the Vindicator nodded, so I released the LA. Thank you. Follow me. There's something you need to see. Okay, so you found a way to escape. Would you know how to get back into his castle? Yes, but I do not want to go back there. He's dealing with forces he cannot control. I know. I need to stop him before he releases chaos upon the world. Now, where are we going? To the Creeper Woods. We arrived to the Creeper Woods the morning of day 69. The Mage Guild was working on a giant potion to bring the statue to life and blow up the deep dark gate. And the potion didn't work? It did. It brought the first thing it touched to life, the cauldron it was made in. Do you know what they're trying to release? An evil creature that ruled the deep dark for eons before the skulks imprisoned it. Wait, ruled the deep dark? I thought it invaded us. Worry about that later. You need to destroy the cauldron while I find you a way through the magical barrier. Okay. The Alay flew off as I turned my attention to the remnants of a nearby village she led me to, with the cauldron sitting in the middle of the wreckage. I snuck my way over to it, and it just looked like a normal cauldron. Until I hit it. It gurgled as it came alive, throwing globs of purple slime at me. I tried to circle it and punch it, but conjured slime crawled out of the cauldron and dealt a lot of damage. They were a lot stronger than normal slime. I put some distance between us and shot at the cauldron. Soon the slime were overwhelming. I had to pillar up and hide to heal. I continued to shoot at the cauldron until the Alay returned giving me a bucket of lava. The lava wiped out all the slime below, but it did not do too much against the metal cauldron. This terrifying abomination was relentless in its attacks and had heaps of health. The Alay also put down some TNT by the creature, trapping it in a hole. I quickly poured lava inside to kill the slime and continued to attack the cauldron until it finally fell, dropping any loot into the lava. After the battle, we promised to meet back near the Enchanter's Castle in a few days. I spent day 70 traveling home, stopping at a village to get some wheat with the emeralds from the sorcerer's lair. On day 71, I made it home and went straight to the council. Have you defeated the Enchanter? Not yet, but I put a stop to the creeper experiment. Now, tell me why our people imprisoned the old ruler of the deep dark. All right, as you know, centuries ago, the skulk were at war with the humans. Being miners, we sought refuge in the deep dark, but instead, we found a powerful being. Some taught it to be the creator of dark magic. Tell me what it is. It is a giant humanoid squid-like creature whose name along with its story is long forgotten. Why is it shrouded in secrecy? It promised great power to a group of skulk to turn on their own people. A civil war broke out and our ancestors used the creature's own magic to imprison it. So bringing attention to the matter could cause rebellion and chaos. Precisely. Since its capture, it has been the warden's responsibility to prevent the creature from ever having control over us again. After that meeting, I went to the underbrewer for more health potions, but he was all out and would need more time to restock. So I spent days 72 to 74 luring cows back to the dark portal fortress. I needed a filling and renewable food source to take on the enchanter's forces. I built a small farm to keep the cows in and used the wheat to multiply them. And by the night of day 74, I had some freshly roasted steak. Now refueled, I set out on day 75 to find the Alay in hopes she figured out a way past the enchanter's magical barrier. It took some time to search the land surrounding his castle. On day 77, I found her, but something seemed off. As I freed her, she said it was a trap. Several 
enchanted creepers emerged from hiding, completely surrounding us. She quickly flew around me, chanting a spell. Then I began to levitate off the ground. As the creepers closed in below, they all blew up. Then the levitation wore off, and I landed on top of a tree. Thanks for saving me. Thank you, too. Did you figure out a way to get past the magical barrier? Yes, I stole it from a pillager before I was recaptured. The spell should get you through. That's great, but I'm still curious. How do you know so much about the enchanter's plans? And why would he trust you? Because he made me. He was always jealous of the Ark of Volker's powers. And once the Vex was created, the enchanter tried to make his own, but ended up with me. A friendly, harmless creature who just wants to help the world, not rule it. Well, thank you for helping me. Now you should get out of here before anything else shows up. The Alay flew off, finally free and ready to help the world. Now I just needed to save it. Day 78, I snuck up to the magical barrier, protecting the enchanter's castle. I tested the spell, but could still not get through. As I was heading home, I found a wandering hero captured by the enchanter's forces. I wanted to know why he had followed me before, so I ran in and took his captors by surprise. I quickly dispatched this patrol party, and then questioned the wanderer. He said it was not safe to talk here, so I hesitantly released him and followed him for a while to what I was sure to be a trap. Day 80, we arrived at a quarry up north. The landscape was both beautiful and freezing. The quarry led down into a secret base with more wandering heroes. Stand down, men. He's with me. Why did you bring me here? My captors were expecting a lot of reinforcements. They deemed me a big threat. Why were you spying on me in the Creeper Woods? The golem said you were tracking a monster there. I was tracking the cauldron, but was intrigued to see a skulk on the surface. Any other questions? What were you doing near the Enchanter's base? Spying, mostly. <laughs> Until I let them capture me, I figured that was the only way to find out how to get through the barrier. The spell doesn't work for outsiders. I've tried. That's because you need to carry any item made by the Enchanter for the spell to work. I see. So why not just let the Ilders fight amongst themselves? The Enchanter is not the first to revolt against the Arch of Oka. These rebellious groups have crazy leaders who would risk destroying the world for a chance at ruling it. So will you all join me in the siege of his castle? I'm afraid not. We can't risk making our presence known again. We can only help from the shadows now. I left the quarry after that, now with some more supplies and a new goal. Find an artifact that was made by the Enchanter. Over the next few days, I traveled back to the Pilger outpost the Vindicator and Vex were stationed at. The night of day 83, while we all camped by the fire, I told them about the spell and how we needed an artifact from the Enchanter to get through his barrier. And that's when I learned why the Archivoker chose the Vindicator for this task, and why he knew these lands so well. The next morning, we set out to go to their woodland mansion. Apparently, before the Vindicator worked for the Archivoker, he first worked at the Enchanter's mansion. That's when the Enchanter was still loyal, though. The Vindicator had to move after accidentally burning down the Enchanter's mansion, causing him to rebuild and make his new castle. When we got to the Archivoker's mansion, it was beautiful and well-guarded. The Vindicator dug up an old chest where he stored his gear used while serving the Enchanter. He tossed me a bottle of swirling purple liquid and said to take a sip. I instantly turned invisible, but the effects wore off quickly. Day 89, I returned home to make sure everyone was safe, and also pick up some potions and steak. On day 91, the wandering hero leader found me as I was leaving the fortress. While we need to remain a secret, I can't turn a blind eye when the world is in danger. Thank you, although I have a feeling you can't stay. Mm, you're right. I've been collecting these books to help fight magic wilders, but it seems like you need them more than me. These are for my armor? How do I add them? I think I know a place nearby. Follow me. While spying on the enchanter's forces, I heard the creature he wants to release has the power to easily destroy entire villages. You'll need all the help you can get. After traveling for a while, we arrived at a swamp near the ocean, with the Sky Witch's tower floating above it. With no one controlling it anymore, it's begun aimlessly floating around the sky. The wandering hero leader performed an odd ritual, and gave me back my armor, now with upgraded enchantments. And as we parted ways, I noticed in the distance a ship sailing by, filled with wandering skeletons, and that's something I've never seen before. I wonder where they could be going. I still had a world to save, so I traveled back to the outpost where the Archivoker's forces awaited my arrival. We decided to stay there for the night, and that's when I had a strange dream. I felt trapped in my own dream as the creature in my prison reached out to me. Allow them to release me, and I will grant you unlimited power. No longer will you serve every whim of the council and king. I jolted awake on day 95, drenched in sweat. The Ildra and the Vex were ready to move out. We walked toward a part of the Enchanter's magical barrier that was not well guarded. I pulled out the potion and the spell, and the barrier dissolved, so we all pushed forward before it came back. While the Ildra stormed the castle, I went to find the Enchanter. I chased him to his horse, where he swiftly rode away. I knew exactly where the Enchanter was headed. I made it back the night of day 98, and had to fight off swarms of Enchanted troops while rushing toward the prison. I slowly approached the gate. The Enchanter couldn't open it with just his key. He needed the two I had, and with a cheap move, he called 
some deep slate to fall on my head, rendering me unconscious. I slipped in and out of consciousness. He took the other two keys from me. I brought them right to him, but couldn't move quite yet. When I finally came to, I heard the enchanter yelling, Cthulhu is free, as he jumped up and down, until a giant tentacle unfurled from the darkness, grabbing him and swinging him around. He fought helplessly, unable to escape the terrifying grasp. Then Cthulhu drained him of his magic before tossing him aside. As the enchanter laid there defeated, I picked up the magical keys. Cthulhu came for me next, but I punched him back into his prison with his tentacle retracting into the darkness. With all three keys in the warden's hand again, the magical barrier relit. Now, I just needed to reclose the gate. Early on day 99, I brought the now powerless enchanter to his new prison cell. With his magic gone, the zombies and creepers no longer served him, and the last of his illager followers fled. Now that the deep dark was ours again, I secured Cthulhu's gate and fixed the chains with the help of the council and a few other skulks. You have saved the world. How do you feel? Not as relaxed as I should be. We need to remain vigilant. Agreed. With the approval from the king and help from the Dark Forger, we will establish a skulk knighthood to assist you, starting with these two skulks. That's wonderful. I will train them. We have to keep an eye out for this creature's influence. Now that the portals reopened, the king wants us to have a strong presence on the surface. Things are much different from when our ancestors lived up there. It will be exciting to explore. On day 100, my knights and I went to watch over the Dark Portal Fortress, replacing any fallen sentries. We also had a visit from some familiar faces. And that's how I survived 100 days as a warden in Hardcore Minecraft. I want to give a special thanks to Unsorted Guy, Gamers, Mudflaps, Nestor, Moose, Glitzcore, Super McRegs, and Coffee Fuel Genius for helping me make this video. To my patrons for supporting the channel, and a big thanks to Monster Legends for sponsoring this video video. Make sure to download the game using the link in the description to get your free starter pack and the new Walking Dead monsters. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.